Hello all, it's James Johnson aka Sulphur Blade. Welcome back to my channel, welcome back to my content, and welcome back to Puffin Plains. So in this particular video, this is more intended um, for the developer of the game. I'm actually going to be uh, providing him with this video for feedback purposes on the beta branch of Puffin Plains. This is what the developer calls the aerobizification of Puffin Plains. And so far, I'm pretty happy with what he's done. Um, it's definitely great strides in the right direction. The game right now, as it is, is a lot more enjoyable to play than the game is outside of the beta branch. So the, the normal game is fine, but this is better. Um, but it's not there yet. It's, it's, it's making good strides, but it's not there yet. So one of the first things that you find when you start a new game is you're asked to name your airline. Okay. That in and of itself is not that strange, I suppose. It's what happens after that. So I named my airline Thundering Air, just like I did um, when I first played this, Thundering Air, because I was going to make a hub out of Thunder Bay, Canada. Right here, if you will. And when I started the game, I found my plans were thwarted in that you start with 10,000 cash and you don't get to pick well you do get to you sort of get to pick where you get to start you get to pick of the airlocks that are of the airports that have been unlocked I don't like it at all there should be a phase between the naming and jumping into the game the way it is where the game generates the uh, the initial airfields and that phase in between should be you picking up picking out your home base your home base should be anywhere you want in the world period end of story you should be able to pick wherever you want from the get-go for free. You shouldn't have to unlock the airfield. Because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense being thundering air and for example that you know I'm named after Thunder Bay. That's 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 why I created the name and then I go into the game and I can't use Thunder Bay. Uh-oh. This sucks. So yeah, um that's my that's the first major gripe that I came across as soon as I started the game. Please give us the ability to pick wherever we want in the world to be our starting base. Please. Okay, next. Moving on from that. Moving on from that, it gets harder to find things to complain about. Because so far, the developer has done a fairly good job. Um, so the primary focus of this is to play in a free play mode against AI and where I'm finding problems right now is that the AI the AI might as well not even exist um, as it is the AI might do a fine job doing what the AI does but the AI does nothing, and I mean nothing in the way of getting in your way or causing you any issues. In fact, I found that the AI was more helpful to me to get off the ground than uh, being a competitor. Because when I started, 
I start. I ended up starting in Nashville because I couldn't pick Thundering Air. Um, and the AI started in Orlando, or well, at least Quail Jet. This this particular uh, airline started in Orlando, and Quail Jet. Uh, I think went over to here to Houston and New Orleans and down to here and and was branching out from Orlando while I was branching out from from uh, Nashville but we had a link between us right between Orlando and Nashville they were connected so it very much seemed like the places I was connecting to people would fly from that down to there would go to the the competitors airline and fly to wherever they were going so it was like I was making my hub they were making his hub and since we were connected we weren't competing we were cooperating if you will to get off the ground which is cool um, definitely like it uh, I think cooperation if you will is perfectly fine However, as the game goes on, the AI is never anything but a minor cooperative entity. It, it really is just that. It, it will facilitate air travel to other places that your passengers can then get to by simply, you know, buying a ticket from my airline to a place, to a hub where the other airline is and then flying wherever it doesn't there's no competition it's right now the game is just all cooperation well except for me the 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 human being me the human being i'm currently messing with quail jet right i have all this money i'm sitting on 75 million cash i make almost you know 800,000 a uh, uh, what is it a day or I, I'm making silly amounts of, of cash and so I've been throwing it into messing with quail jet I've been basically mimicking all of their flights and I've been lowering the price down below market value to attempt to steal um, their business just to mess with them so I'm doing what the AI should be doing. <laughs> the AI doesn't do that. The AI doesn't fly my, my routes. And the AI doesn't attempt to undercut my routes. The AI just does what the AI does. And it, it's, it does it effectively. I mean, as far as the AI being a, a capable airline, if you will, it's, it's fine. Um, you know, you, you can see some of these these airlines here, and and they're they're functional. They make money. Um, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with them. They're it, it, it's nice to not be in an empty world. But uh, you don't you don't see the AI trying to really uh, attempt to cut into my market I've noticed that Quailjet who started right next to me whenever I would pick something they would kinda of shy away from picking it they Qu Quailjet attempted to avoid locations I was flying to and so we basically had this who could fly to different locations in North America first. Quailjet kind of went over here to Phoenix and, and adapted out from Phoenix while I was going up to Thunder Bay and going into Canada and going up to Alaska and then down to Denver. And so once I started getting into Denver, then I started flying to some of the same locations that Quailjet was flying to. But by and large, Quailjet never really made a whole lot of attempts to fly to places I was flying to. It, it seems like the AI 
is almost too non-confrontational, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, it, it seems to function uh, as far as being capable of making money and making new connections and everything, but it doesn't seem to be very cutthroat. It doesn't seem to have uh, any type of killer instinct to mess with the player at all. And I think that needs to be improved. However, this is just the beginning of the AI, and as just the beginning of the AI, it's it's not too bad. It's 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 a good it's a good starting place. One of the main features of this, I don't, I almost don't even find a point for it really. Um, it's let's let's look at Orlando, right? Here we are at Orlando. This is one of the most contended locations on the map. Well, it, it probably is the most contended location on the map because I, the player, made it so. Not because the computer made it so. This is where Quailjet started from. This this was his initial hub. I went in purposely trying to mess with Quailjet. But anyway, you've got me, a very large airline, and Quailjet, a fairly large airline. We're both flying out of Orlando. My throughput usage. No problem. Um, let's go to the concourses. Unoccupied, unoccupied, unoccupied. Quailjet is using one concourse. And I don't really think Quailjet needs to use that concourse if I have to be perfectly honest. Um, I have a feeling he has plenty of th throughput without having to use a concourse. Basically what I'm trying to get at here is the concourses, they don't work. They don't work the way they're intended to. Um, right now there is far too much throughput uh, in, like here. Here's here's one of my primary hubs in in South America. I have all kinds of throughput just by uh, maxing out the security checkpoints here, which is the shared throughput, uh, if you will, uh, that you can invest in to increase the the throughput of the airport for everybody, not just yourself. So I increased the thru throughput of the airport for everybody, but it doesn't matter. I'm the only person flying over, flying out of this hub anyway. So concourses? What's the point? Yes, yes, there is a place on my map here at Thunder Bay where I'm actually using the concourses. That's because of, an, of, the, of the next problem I currently have with this iteration of the game. And that's airports are fixed into what they can be and I do not like it. So what do I mean by that? So here I am, I'm Thundering Airlines. My headquarters is Thunder Bay, Canada. The whole point is to make Thunder Bay the next O'Hare or Heathrow or, you know, it's in my mind going to be the giant international airport that everyone looks at in awe. However, it can only ever have two concourses. I can't change this. It can only ever get two buildings. I can't affect this. Can't change it. Can't, can't do anything about it. So Thundering Bay will never be the giant mecha airport 
I want to make it. Because it's it's been pigeonholed to be what it is. Um, like, for example, oh, where's an airport that's not pigeonholed? Mexico City, maybe? Yeah, like, look at this. Mexico City has room for 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 seven buildings. And how many concourses does it have? It has A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it has a whole bunch of concourses and seven buildings. And that's just because it's Mexico City. It starts that way. I didn't do anything to make it that way. It, that's just the way it is. It, it, it is the huge place. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but it, it's kind of fine that that there are vari variations of airfields out here. I do like that. I do like that mechanic. I, I like that certain locations are better than others, if you will. However, I think there needs to be a way for the player to turn his small airfield like Thunder Bay into something like Mexico City. There needs to be... You have unsafe changes. Are you sure you want to exit? I don't want to do anything. I don't want to change anything. Don't change a thing. Um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I. You, the player needs to be able to make his Heathrow. The player needs to be able to make his O'Hare. And if that's if that's in Rapid City, then it's in Rapid City. If that's in Thunder Bay, then it's in Thunder Bay. There needs to be a way for the player to turn his his headquarters into the mecca of of the airline industry. So please give us some way to do that. Which now leads into the next feedback I have, and that is money I kind of like it the way it is it's kind of fast paced it's kind of relaxed it's kind of easy however it's too easy it's too relaxed it's too fast paced money literally grows on trees in this game um, it's far too easy to get here, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll give you an example, right? So, you know, I've got money coming out of my bun hole. Um, let's say, you know, at this point, I want to set up a, a new hub somewhere. So let's, let's just set up a new hub somewhere. Uh, how about, yeah, down here in Africa. So I will connect Lagos to, Here to this hub, I like to I like to co connect my hub to two other hubs. So I'll hit order, start playing. Then the other hub that I'm going to connect to is mm, probably my primary European hub in Brest. That's where the international flights fly out of mostly. And I'll order another Sawtail Micro. Start playing. Okay, now I've got. I've got the hub basically connected, so let's go nuts. I'm not even looking at my money because I know I have more than enough and uh, I don't need to look at the money it's, it's, it grows on trees there is no concern there is there's no financial wonder if I'm putting myself into the poorhouse 
by just randomly throwing together a new fabulous hub down in Africa that that the AI can't do and will probably be jealous of. Okay, so there we go. Now I go to Lagos. Uh, look, it's a pretty big airfield. Um, how about that? Uh, anyway, let's go to the buildings. We'll throw in small lounge, purchase, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Um, it can't ever upgrade beyond whatever this is, even though it says there's other upgrades. Uh, I'm sure that's a thing that'll get worked on eventually. I don't think it's something I need to report. See, like, medium hangar doesn't go beyond medium hangar. Um, small fuel depot, sure, let's have that. And let's um, throw in crew training, why not? Okay, and then let's crank up the checkpoint, crank, crank up the, the uh, everything, and now everything's maxed out. I have a maxed out hub. Um, I just threw all that together, and it didn't even dent my money. It, it, it was nothing I even had to be concerned with. The game is just that easy currently. Um, yeah, so... So what was the point of what I just did? These things here are far too cheap. They need to be astronomically more expensive. Um, when's the last time you bought a, a a hotel for five grand? You know, a hotel should be like five million. When's the last time you bought a a, a premium lounge for five grand? It should be like Oh, I don't know, eight hundred thousand. You know, uh, a premium lounge is is gonna be a premium lounge. It's gonna be pretty swanky and really amazing, right? So, definitely, we need uh, a far larger gold sinks here in these buildings. They need to cost a lot more than what they currently cost. Uh, there's there's no there's no cost incurred anywhere. It's it's ridiculously easy currently. <clears throat> so yes, uh, buildings far too cheap. Though I, I like the concept of the buildings, you're on the right track. The, the, the buildings the way they are are cool, but it needs to be cooler. They are not cooler, but it needs to be more expensive. And we need the, the full range of the buildings. We, we need the the large hangar and the extra large hangar and the the amazing nightclub and the five star hotel and a, and I'm sure that's all coming and that you're just trying to work it out but currently um, every upgrade is like the same five thousand maybe the first the first one star motel should be I don't know fifty thousand. And then the two star should be I don't know, a hundred and fifty thousand, and the three star should be five hundred thousand, and the four star should be one million, and the five star should be five million. There you go, perfect way of setting up the 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 hotels, for instance, and and making them a real gold zinc that feels right and fleshed out. Okay, that brings us into the next thing, the airplanes. Um, yeah, airplanes, airplanes. Yeah, we're, here's the airplanes. The same five airplanes that, well, if I have to be honest, this PAX, this Midvale PAX 125, never used it, don't need it, it's pointless. This levering Roebling, don't use it, don't need it, it's pointless. The levering Veteran, don't need it, don't make it, it's pointless, except for the fact that it's part of the skill tree, and because I can unlock it and it and it and it to make the Sawtail Micro, which is the only plane that really matters in this game, with the exception of the pack 400. 
So the PAC-400 is your intercontinental plane that can fly beyond 6,000, and your Sawtail Micro is for everything. It's your short hop, it's your long hop. I mean, 6,000, let's, let's, let's look at what 6,000 is, right? So here's, here's Thunder Bay, Canada. I am connecting internationally across the pond over here to Brest, France with Sawtail Micros. There's 6,000 easily makes the interna international connection. I very very rare that I would need the big boy. Here is a place I would need the big boy. To go from Sydney to Los Angeles requires the big boy. But let's say to fly to Honolulu, I don't need the big boy, right? I can get away with the Sawtail Micro. Um, to fly from Los Angeles to Tokyo, however, I need the big boy. <sighs> the game The game needs more than two planes, and that's essentially what the game is right now. It's the Sawtail Micro, and it's the the big boy. You have two planes. The game should have like uh, I don't want to overwhelm you, but there should be like forty planes or more, uh, maybe even a hundred and twenty different planes. We need different plane manufacturers like. A Boeing with like 30 different types of aircraft underneath that manufacturer and a and a Lockheed with its own 20 different types of planes and a uh, McDonnell Douglas with its own set of planes and an Airbus manufacturer with its its own and you know you, you get the point right um, right now it's like all that all that exists in the world is Boeing and the only planes that matter is the the 737 which is which is what I envision the Sawtail Micro to be it's like a 737 super it's it's you know the plane that Southwest Airline uses for everything because it's a very good a very efficient a very amazing plane that can do regional and even longer hops and carry a fair amount of passengers. It's a good plane. There's, there's nothing against it. But the game should start... There should be a timeline, right? We should be starting in... The, the, the fledgling times of the air industry where we're flying around with biplanes and stuff um, that have very limited range and carry like five to ten people tops. And then as time progresses, technology unlocks. Or what would really be cool is, is if you put... If you put a technology tree or, or or something like a technology tree some way that we could like aim our our tech to unlock particular styles of aircraft that fit our play style maybe we don't care about really long range but we care about a lot about a putting a lot of people into the airframe but the range isn't so important or maybe we really care about having long-range aircraft but we don't care about having that many passengers on it we we could not only be an airline um, we could have our own aircraft manufacturing on the side who knows where we're we're investing some of our money into technology to make our own airplanes that that 
fit our own style of play. Uh, but yeah, anything that gets us more than the airplanes that we currently have. And then the next thing about those airplanes that we currently have. Um, here we are, the marketplace. So I tell Pico at, well, I think this is, I think it's 38,000 now because of inflation, because I've been playing so long. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's gotta be less than 10,000 in the beginning of the game because you only start with 10,000 and you somehow have to buy a plane. So, well, no, I think you start with two Saiteo Picos, but still you can buy a plane in the beginning for far less than 10,000. I do remember that for sure. But anyway, um, I think there's too much inflation. I, I, hmm, how do I put this? There's too much inflation because right now we have the same aircraft. The same aircraft should not change its price tag from whatever it was in the beginning. I'm going to guess it was around two to two to three thousand, up to thirty-eight thousand. That's that's like three thousand percent increase in price it's 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 redonkulous um, it's it doesn't it doesn't feel realistic it doesn't not well this is a video game and I guess things don't have to feel realistic but it breaks the immersion it, 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 it the inflation feels strange and I have the inflation currently set to low in the game. At the same time, inflation would be perfectly fine if you did it in a different manner. And what do I mean by that? If you go back to what I'm talking about with these different airplanes, and you're starting in you know, the 1920s or 30s or 40s with, with biplanes, well, it makes sense that they would cost a thousand dollars, right? It's just a biplane. And then, as you progress through the research tree, and you get to I don't know the the year two thousand, and you're unlocking like say a seven thirty seven. Well, it would make sense that you're going to be purchasing a seven thirty seven for upwards of well well over 300,000 should be should be more in the neighborhood of 800,000 to 1.5 million and that would feel natural because right now it just feels like airplanes cost more because the game has progressed in turns and they just cost more even though they're the same damn airplane I've been buying the entire time but for some reason they've gone up in price 3000 percent for the exact same plane I've been buying for the last well uh, 41 quarters according to what the game says Q41 and five days. So let's see, there's a fiscal quarter, I guess would be four quarters in a year. So I've gone, I've gotten 10 years. I'm a little over 10 years. And an airplane has gone in price 3,000% um, in 10 years. Yeah, that, that doesn't feel right to me. But it's because of the pacing of the game. And the pacing of the game would make more sense if you went from quarters 
I don't know, to years, and you threw in more planes, biplanes, um, single engine, noisy things, dual, dual prop engine planes, jets shouldn't come along for a long way into your gameplay. Um, yeah, uh, I'm beating this horse to death, I suppose, but yeah, I need to do something with airplanes. That's right now, if I have to be honest, what you've done with the AI is pretty huge. If if you even if you even just left the AI the way it is right now and put as much focus as you've put into the AI into the airplanes seriously the airplanes need as as much of a focus as you've done to the AI the airplanes the airplanes need their own giant update we need far more airplanes across across a whole a full a whole um set of time and they need to not increase in price due to inflation they need to have a set price tag a 737 costs x no matter what no matter how long the game goes on it's just that the 737 becomes obsolete you you want to replace it with a better plane which then goes into the other part of this is planes need to have some sort of upkeep or not upkeep upkeeps the wrong word they need to have a lifespan planes don't fly forever in this game planes fly forever but planes need to wear out they need to have a working lifespan and they need to grow old and stop functioning so yeah I, I think the airplane portion of this game needs giant huge volumes and swaths of work but what you've done with the AI is pretty good minus what I've already told you about okay so that's the airplanes what's next on the things to complain about <laughs> This is this is this is constructive criticism. I'm I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm I'm absolutely thrilled with how far this game has come. So in such short amount of time, I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm I'm very excited about this game. I think it could be the greatest game of the genre ever. In fact, if you if you listen to this feedback and you do what people are are telling you to do, Mr. Developer. I think you could have the next Stardew Valley type success on your hands. When you build this, I'm telling you, they will come. I, I, I recognize the fact that you, you already feel like this game is a smash success. I've, I've noticed some of you, your feedback that you've given us on Steam about you never expected this game to come as far as it has. But at the same time, we, the player, never expected this game to be so close to being so good. You are really, you're really close to making a masterpiece. A small developer like you, this is, this is a special thing, what you have going on here. I'm telling you, you're actually really, really, really close to to, to breaking into a Stardew Valley type success. This could be the airplane game of the last 20 years. It could be the greatest airplane game ever made. You are that close to creating a masterpiece. Um, and I'm saying this because I want to stoke your ego. I want you to hear this praise. I want you to understand that you have something special here and you really need to follow through with what you're saying what we're telling you to do because you're you're close you're close to what we have always wanted in an airplane game that nobody's ever been able to give us it, it, we either get these spreadsheet things that are frankly dull, dull and boring and incredibly slow or we get some 
multiplayer online thing that's again incredibly slow because it's multiplayer and it's online that this genre has been begging for something to replace Aerobiz and that's going to be your game you are on to something here man anyway where where was i going oh uh <clears throat> the 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 feedback stuff here you've got some good feedback in this and you've got some rather interesting feedback and what do i mean by that i i think it's because you just haven't gotten to messing with this yet um that's the statistics there's nothing here um and i'm i'm guessing there's nothing here be and the things that are here like whatever this is it's not really legible the the the, the uh how do i put it the way this data is referenced is too too broad to notice trends it needs to be compacted so that you can actually see some trends here this this might as well be a flat table for every single airline you it's it's not showing us much of any data here other than we all seem to be pretty much at the same place but we're not we're not at the same place but it it sure looks that way um, yeah these data screens there's uh, there's not even anything here they're they're lackluster and if I have to be honest this shouldn't be a big function because if I have to be honest I don't really care about these screens but the only reason I do care about these screens is because there's a button here that I could click on and I can go and look at them and if I can go and look at them well I wish they would actually show me something that I could read right now they're yeah but there's nothing really here to read so either just get rid of the statistics altogether and honestly it wouldn't bug me at all because the only reason I am clicking on this is because there's a button here if there's no button there I wouldn't click on this and if I if I if there was no button here to click on this then I would never see this and I would never see that there's illegible statistics so if you're going to put statistics, actually make an attempt to make the statistics somehow be statistical, that, that a person can actually notice trends or don't bother with the statistics. Just get rid of it and concentrate on the more important, fun parts of the game. <clears throat> What's this next button? Um, yeah, uh, I don't think I've ever actually clicked this button to get here. I've always clicked here to get here why is there two places to click to get to the same place get rid of that button if this does that why does this need to do that you don't need two buttons to go to the exact same location just saying um, can I click on anything else here uh, I should be able to click on this right this is my my fleet that seems like information I would like to know about I would like to know about my fleet what is my fleet comprised of it seems to me in the base game I could click on something to actually see what my fleet was com com comprised of but I can no longer do that I don't know how many uh, sawtail picos I'm running for instance and I have nowhere to find that out I, I have no idea how many sawtail micros I'm running I have no way to find that out do I have a way to find that out um, 
um, map modes. I've never clicked them before. How do I get back to the oh, escape? Good. Toggle region names. Uh, well, that's fine for the other style of game because knowing where the regions were would would help. What is this? Map mode airlines. Oh, hey, this is a very handy map mode. I didn't even realize it was here. Now I can see exactly where the different airlines are flying. Oh, that's that's nifty. I like this map mode. Um, though Oh, I see. So red is quail, orange is me. Okay, so yeah, I'm all the orange. Air Raven is green. Air Raven's not doing so well. Um, Air Mockingbird was the was the AI that kept up with me for the longest periods of time. Uh, they're over here. Quail, interesting. Quail almost looks like they started here by me, and they decided we're gonna we're gonna get out of Dodge and go. Look at this! Look at this! This is this is cool, but it also shows me the AI is functioning a little wrong. So the AI is doing what it should be doing with the player, with other AIs. So the AI is competing with each other instead of competing with the player. You, you can clearly see this with this map mode here, that Quail is flying to the same location as, what is this, Macaw? And Cardinal. So you got Cardinal. Uh, quail and macaw all flying to the same locations competing with each other really cool competition awesome love to see it but it's happening between the AI instead of the AI doing it with the player Hmm. Yeah, here we've got the AI seems to have decided to compete with each other there. Looks like we got some AI competition happening here as well. So why is the AI competing with each other and, and basically ignoring the player? So this needs to that needs to be fixed. Um, and finally, what's the last complaint I have? It's on this particular airline ranking thing. Um, I shouldn't click a button for this to be up. Honestly, this information should like be default on the screen all the time. And the airline that's winning, like me, should be in first place. This this should be sorted by the airline that's winning. The winningest airline should be on the top, and the crappiest airline, the losingest airline should be on the bottom. They should be ranked in order of how they're performing in this screen. I know that's a minor thing, but it's a minor thing that would matter to me. And I think those are the main I think those are the main things I kind of want to get off my chest. Um otherwise things are looking really good right now. Um I'm really I'm really happy with this beta version of the game. Uh, it's it's a huge improvement 
over the normal base game. Uh, but yeah, there's there's still definitely room for improvement, and hopefully I've given you feedback that you can use to make said improvement. Anyway, I'm James Johnson, aka Software Blade. This is my content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If so, please smash that like button, consider subscribing, and until the next time, all peace.